Welcome back to Taste Buds, where the conversation is real, food might be a little questionable. We're here today with Captain Victoria King. Uh, Ma'am, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Uh, we had a great response to uh, our last episodes of Taste Buds, so I'm super excited today to talk about Afrogen and how it relates to LOE 2, Deploy the Forces Forward. Um, Again, I'm Chief Master Sergeant Sean Andrews, the Command Chief for the 375th Air Mobility Wing, your host wing here at Sky Air Force Base. Joining me today, ma'am, can you introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Captain Victoria King and I'm the Installation Deployment Officer. Um, so what that kind of includes is overseeing deployments for the entire installation, not just the Air Mobility Wing. Um, so including our tenant units and our uh, geographically separated units. And which squadron uh, is that role fall under? Uh, the 375th Logistic Readiness Squadron. So are you a loggy by trade? I am, yep. And, and how does the IDO uh, kind of role fit into that career field? It's interesting because it, uh, uh, logistics is kind of overseeing how we get people from point A to point B, people and equipment. Um, so being a log planner kind of encapsulates that. So you have your basic logistics functions like fuel, uh, ground transportation, uh, getting cargo onto aircraft and the installation uh, deployment readiness cell that just oversees all of those functions and make sure they get from point A to point B. So pretty much overseeing the entire deployment model for Scott Air Force Base as a whole. Excellent way to put it, Chief. Uh, I think you probably said that, I just uh, repeated it. Um, uh, Colonel Poole, your wing commander, the 375th Air Mobility Wing Commander, released uh, three LOEs uh, verbally so far. I think we're gonna see them at the, the De December commander's call uh, in paper. But uh, LOE one, line of effort one, is operate the flagship. Uh, and that's the, the daily business here at Sky Air Force Base. Line of effort two is deploy forward, forces forward. Uh, and that's where you come in, ma'am, and we'll talk about that today. And then line of effort three is seize the competitive advantage, and uh, we'll explore that a lot over the coming weeks. Uh, all pointing towards the, the vision and ultimate focus of delivering victory. Get into uh, the bread and butter of what you do. I think I have to warn you, uh, we eat on this show. I hope you're hungry. Uh, and if you're not hungry, I hope you can fake it for the cameras because uh, I think we're about to get some tasty, tasty treats. Oh. Well, ma'am, thank you, chef. I'm not sure if you've seen the show, but here at Taste Buds, we like to do something we call Taste Buds Roulette. One uh, we're gonna dine on. I think that's pointing your way, so we'll pick this one. Sounds good. Tell us what we got today. Oh, we got Southwest beef and black beans. Ooh, that'll go great with some hot sauce. M MRE before? This is actually my first MRE. What? Your first MRE. Yeah, so on. let's pause X. Tell the, tell the viewers, uh, how long have you been in the Air Force? Uh, four and a half years. And uh, is this your first assignment? This is my second assignment. Where were you at before this? I was at Laughlin before this. Laughlin, and where is that for the majority of the viewers that have never heard of Laughlin Air Force so, Base? So, uh, Texas has a, a wonderful shape with a little curve at the end. We call it the armpit, and Del Rio, Texas is right in the armpit. All right, so I think we have a taste buds first. Ma'am, this is your inaugural experience with an MRE. Right now, there are like balloons and things going off above our heads on the podcast. Uh, so, we'll let you open it up and experience your first MRE. Wow. Look at that. Wow. Good first try. That's awesome. All right. So have you opened an MRE before? Um, no. This is readiness <laughs> training right here. Okay. So just explore all that. Wow. Okay. So uh, we got the Southwest beef. Okay. Um, and a wonderful little package. Um, a number five. Um, lemon poppy seed pound cake. The poppy seed. Okay. It's got a little... plate there. Oh, that looks great. It doesn't look horrible. It's, it, it didn't plop on the, uh, That's true. It didn't plop down like a fish, you know. Uh, <laughs> I see some veggies in there. It's almost like a beef stew. Yeah, okay. Like, I don't even think you yeah. got any beef. Yeah. Oh. There you go. You got to cool. get the, I mean, <laughs> you, you're, you'll be surprised how much it tastes like spam. Before we get into the meat and potatoes of the conversation, let's get into the meat and potatoes of the MRE. Uh, first bite's always got to be just plain au naturel. What do you think? Hmm, that's actually better than I thought. Yeah? Um, 
Can you imagine sitting in a DFP, really rainy, uh, haven't had a good meal in a while? Could you imagine eating that and it tasting like heaven? This would hit. This would be good. Oh, right on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, could you pass the Tabasco, I think? Absolutely. Uh, Louisiana, okay. And shake it. Yeah. I'll tell you, um, so back in the 1900s when I first started deploying, uh, if, I, if I had to choose, uh, I think we had the Chili Mac already. That's one of the go-tos. Uh, the turkey a la king is really good. Anything Thanksgiving related that they, they put out, those are always great because they have extra stuff. Okay. Yeah. So we've heard a lot about this thing called Afrogen. What is that? So Afrogen, or the Air Force uh, Force Generation model, is the new way that the Air Force wants to deploy. Um, so the basic foundation of it is uh, the Air Force didn't used to have a way to project forces to combatant commanders. So combatant commanders would say, hey, we need the Air Force to go here, and we have onesie twosie collection points of, of Air Force members uh, that would deploy. And it wasn't really showing our force capabilities. So now the Afrogen model is pushing everybody into force elements. So basically, what can the Air Force provide to combatant commanders? You know, can we send uh, mission generation squadrons with uh, with maintenance and aircraft? Uh, so it's really changing how we're presenting ourselves. Uh, and now, you know, the the big thing that's come up is the phases. So instead of having the um, the Bins, the or, bins yep. yeah now we're in phases so that's going to be your ready phase uh, prepare phase certify and uh, reset and that reset is, is going to be really big so instead of being a one to two model where sometimes you're uh, deploying right off the bat uh, now you have a one to three well ratio so once every three years you should be really big, instead of once every two so on on paper that sounds amazing mm -hmm. to the airmen here at scott air force base how how does that make things look different so there are some key differences between our AEF legacy model and our Afrogen model. Um, and the big one is making sure that people are, are trained and ready and certified in a different way. So okay. now we have ready airman training. Um, and for a lot of people that just looks like boring CBTs, but what it really is, is the Air Force cueing us that we need to be more ready and more flexible mm. than we have previously. Uh, so what we're training towards is different. You know, we're used to these uh, deployments going to the IUD where we have an established supply chain. And now the Air Force is saying, hey, you might need to go somewhere that doesn't have a Starbucks or doesn't have hardened facilities. You know, how, how are we training our airmen to be prepared for that? Almost like trying to instill in them a warrior mindset to help propel them into success. Kind of teasing uh, LOE 3 Bravo uh, of our LOEs that Colonel Poole uh, has laid out. Yeah, you like how I weave that in there. Ma'am, I, uh, I just put spiced apples on your plate. What do you think about those? Those are pretty good. Yeah, that, that it's not bad. feel pretty good in a deployed environment. Um, and, you know, for a dessert-ish, not horribly not nutritious. Yeah. Um, Feeling the bite. Yeah, just 160 calories in the entire pouch. So, not bad. Uh, I want to circle back to Afrogen uh, and kind of the phases. Can you... Tell me again what the, the four phases are. So the Afrogen cycle is going to start with your prepare phase. So that's where you're going to be ready to go out the door, uh, complete all those wrap trainings. Um, your ready phase is where you're going to do a certification event to make sure that you're actually ready to do the job in the condition that you're expected to perform under. Your available phase. Is that like a, a flyaway exercise? It or, could be. Um, or... Certification events look like a lot of things depending on where you're, you're going and what your wing is tasked for. Um, but those awesome flyaway exercises that we've done at Oak Field, that's an excellent example of a certification event. Um, after that, you'll have your available phase where you can be expected to deploy. Um, and then whenever you get or you complete your deployment, that's when you'll go into your reset phase. Um, so in your reset phase, you're really just doing base CDC work, um, like kind of just R&R, &R, getting back into the, the swing of things and doing your, your regular job. And hopefully, most importantly, getting some time back with your family so you're prepared to go back and start the cycle all over again. Now, is the whole base going in the same phase at the same time? No, Chief, that would make my job too easy. Yeah. Um, so you're gonna have airmen in different phases at different times. The goal with Avergen is not to have more than 20% um, postured in any given phase. So you wouldn't, ex you would hope to not lose more than 20% of your of your squadron in each phase. 20% per squadron, per okay. Squadron. Uh, now I just have enlisted math, but if there's four phases mm -hmm. and 20%, there's a, an extra something out there, right? There is, and that's gonna come in with shortfalls. Shortfalls, um, okay. So in order to waive well time, that has to go far above the, the base level. So the goal isn't to waive those shortfalls. However, you're gonna have members postured 
in all of those phases that are gonna exceed the amount that are actually taxed. Okay. And how do we uh, how do we divide that up amongst the, the base and the wing to determine um, who all goes out at the same time? Your squadron commander is gonna have a lot of input on that because they know what it takes to keep the lights on. And really when we're thinking about how we're posturing people, um, that's, that's handled by half. However, it's squadron commander's responsibilities to know what is your baseline level of support? What can you actually you know, produce? What can you send out? And then what can you do to keep the lights on in your host installation? Well, you know, uh, if I'm if I'm in the dorms and my suite mate, I find out he's deploying next month. Mm -hmm. How do I get on that deployment? Why do you want to get on that deployment? Because we're friends and we want to deploy together. We want to go together. Um, you could ask to be in the same phase. So it's not just automatic that I can just go. I it's have to be not. phased with him or something. So the way that deployments are coming down now is uh, they're actually by name taskings. So your your commanders will be filling in. Uh, whenever they do their their assessments um, on the the joint force, um, they're saying, "Hey, we have this unit type code, this UTC, full of X amount of people, and it's going to have a name associated with it." So whenever half says, "Hey, I need this UTC from Scott Air Force Base," it comes down with the name already. You should try that delicious poppy seed pound that cake. Delicious. It's got flavor. Oh, that's dry. <laughs> it's just going to suck the moisture <laughs> out of your brain. Um. Sorry for the awkward silence. Um, that really dried my whole body. <laughs> that did. Uh, sinuses and all. Uh, okay, so I think I hear you. Uh, this this rat training, ready airman training. Uh, so I'm I'm used to. Sorry about that. I'm used to doing. Uh, I get a deployment tasking and I'll go to do this just in time training. How is ready airman training different? This will alleviate the need for just-in-time training because you'll have an entire six-month portion in your phase where you know, hey, I have to get all this training done. You're given time to do that training, um, and that means that everybody should be ready. So there's no need to, to squeeze it in into a month. You know, you're stressed, you're going on maybe your first deployment, you're trying to take care of your family, take care of your house, and also do CPTs. That's a lot of strain on airmen. So now you have some time built into the cycle to take care of that stuff, and it's good for two years. Uh, I have to give you props on a couple things. Number one, uh, you tried your first MRE today, and I got to be a part of that. We got to be a part of that. Uh, in fact, you tried your first MRE today in front of the entire world, uh, and that took guts. Uh, that took uh, a, a warrior spirit, a warrior mindset, uh, and I think because of that, you are now ready to deploy forward forces uh, as the installation deployment officer. Happy to do it. Um, so yeah, we had we had. A, Great time eating today, uh, talking about line of effort two and deploy forward, uh, deploy forces forward. Uh, we had a great MRE. I hope it tickled your taste buds. Uh, it sure tickled mine. Uh, and until next time, have a great day.